Of course, the future and any economic recovery are dependent upon a successful vaccine in inoculating all of us against future exposure to COVID-19. Joining us in the stream right now is Dr. Paul Stoffels, Johnson & Johnson's Chief Scientific Officer. He is joining us once again from Belgium. And we want to point out to everybody that there was news made by Johnson & Johnson at the end of July in which you told all of us about the successful tests so far of the vaccine, demonstrating, quote, neutralizing antibodies, successfully preventing subsequent infection and providing complete or near complete protection in the lungs from the virus in non-human primates. Dr. Stoffels, I think all of us are encouraged, but what happens next with all of this? Well, um, thank you very much for having me on the program. What ha happens next is that uh, second half of July, a few weeks ago, we started the phase one uh, clinical trials. And as you have seen in, uh, in, the, in the publication, we achieved that with one single dose injection. So we had complete protection uh, from disease and near complete protection for transmission of disease. And that uh, encouraged us to study the single uh, dose injection, which is now in 350 volunteers, uh, the first, the first um, cohort of volunteers. We're going to do a thousand people study uh, with um, uh, healthy people study just to study the behavior and getting the, the, to the, non, the neutralizing antibody data. Hopefully, beginning of September, we'll have the first uh, data from that, evaluating that, and we plan a phase three uh, placebo controlled study starting the second half of September. All of that is in full preparation in several uh, hundreds of sites in the world, especially in the US, but also in uh, broader in the world. And hopefully in the next, uh, by the end of the year or early next year, we'll have the data showing the efficacy. So the study is powered for uh, giving a very quick answer to does this work, yes or no. And we should point out, too, that the government has contracted with the Johnson & Johnson to deliver 100 million doses of the vaccine candidate. We know from previous discussions with you that J&J &J is producing this vaccine at risk right now, but they're not going to charge U.S. taxpayers for the vaccine, just perhaps the doctor's service to inoculate. But when you say single dose... We hear other vaccine potential manufacturers talking about multiple doses. How important is it that your vaccine might protect us with just one inoculation? Well, the one inoculation uh, is important in the, in the pandemic for immediate protection. Of course, you need a longer term protection. And for all vaccines, we will evaluate the booster uh, as part of the study regimen. But we evaluate first whether a single dose protects you for disease transmission and, and disease uh, and lung disease. Um, we will do booster dose studies as we go forward as part of a study program. But the first in, intent is to get a single dose vaccine, whether yes or no, it can protect you for the disease. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stoffels, it's Julie here. So as Adam mentioned, you all and other companies also are making the vaccines already, even though we don't know yet if it's successful. Yeah. I wonder if it's even possible to put a probability of success, any kind of percentage on your efforts. And I'm also curious, I don't know if this is a silly question, what happens to those 100 million doses if in fact you find the vaccine isn't effective? Can you repurpose it, tweak it in some way, or do you end up destroying all of, all of that medicine? Well, first to answer on your last question is if the vaccine doesn't work in clinical trials, the 100 million vaccines and more because we are producing up to a billion for next year um, will be lost. So we, um, we, we produce at risk because for, for the pandemic, it's very urgent. The selected vaccine we put in clinical trials is now in manufacturing. And that will be before we have any data, uh, any clinical data, we have started all the upscaling. We have uh, several bioreactors in the world active. We have uh, hundreds of millions of vials in the making. We have everything in place to already prepare that at the moment the results are there, we will be able to deliver the first vaccines. Dr. Stoffels, I also want to ask you about the recent reports and news that Russia said it has developed an effective vaccine. As you know, there was some skepticism around those reports. And there's also some skepticism amongst um, various populations about taking a vaccine, particularly a new vaccine. Now, I know you're on the science side of it, but what at Johnson & Johnson do you all have planned in terms of 
trying to make the population feel more comfortable with uh, taking a, a new vaccine? Well, we have been working on this vaccine platform because it's not the only vaccine which we use this technology for about 10 years. We have made an Ebola vaccine, which recently got approved. And at the moment, a large vaccination campaign is ongoing in, in Rwanda and Congo. Now more than 70,000 people have got a vaccine. We have an RSV vaccine, which we tested in elderly, with uh, which is ongoing, also very large study. We did a Zika vaccine and we have an HIV vaccine. And so the total exposure of the of people to the technology, what gives us confidence that we have a safe platform which will uh, be tolerated and can be administered. In all of these, we were able, in the four vaccines we tested, we were able to transfer, to, to translate what we learned in animal models into humans. And that also gives us confidence that we have a good chance to make it. We, make, we also produce the vaccine, so we are sure we can produce it. We know that it's reasonable safe. The one question we now need to answer is, does it protect for disease or does it protect also for transmission? And that's the one, so we are reasonably comfortable that we get to a vaccine and hopefully we don't have to throw away the billion vaccines we make. Dr. Stoffel, two questions for you. The first, these uh, much larger scale human trials that will start in the second half of September. Have you already started to line up the potential volunteers for this? And is it just in the United States? What will this look like? Well, the, we are working with uh, with the U.S. government, with the NIH, the, the network, uh, the COVID network uh, for clinical trials. Um, it is it tens of uh, close to more than 100 uh, study sites are being lined up to do this. Now, it's difficult to line up people at this moment uh, for the study already because you have to go where the disease is transmitting. We can only learn whether you prevent infection with the disease, with the vaccine, is where there is high transmission. And so we'll decide in the next few weeks on which centers in the world will be activated. It will also include centers in, in South America, as well as in Africa, and maybe in the next studies also in Europe. We are working further on expanding around the world. Mm -hmm. And our last question to you, Dr. Stoffels, we hear from Dr. Anthony Fauci all the time that he is, quote, cautiously optimistic about a vaccine. What about you personally? What's your opinion of the vaccine Johnson & Johnson is working on? What can you share with us to give us some hope? Well, I'm reasonably optimistic, <laughs> but also cautious, uh, because uh, the benefit risk always has to be good. But um, um, I wouldn't work that hard with a few thousand people in J&J &J on this, already at risk producing a billion vaccines, if we, if we wouldn't believe it was going to work. So we are very committed, but of course the studies will have to, to show whether it finally works. So let's wait for that before we uh, victory. Mm -hmm. We are counting on it. Dr. Paul Stoffels is the Chief Scientific Officer at Johnson & Johnson, and we always appreciate your updates here on The Move. All the best to you and the team at J&J. Hey, investors. Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.